Here's what we've established so far. We've established this mind-blowing idea that complex numbers are not just numbers. Right? We can think of them, we can represent them geometrically on the complex plane. We can draw this fancy thing called an argand diagram. And um, argand diagrams are going to become your very, very good friends over the next couple of weeks. Now, here's what we established first. Right? We started to go back through the arithmetic that we did in our first lesson. We looked at addition. Uh, I should put my numbers back on. Um, actually, no, I don't need them. Um, Z1 was like 3 plus i, and Z2 was... 1 plus 5i, right? And so our conclusion was, you add Z1 and Z2, the sum of Z1 and Z2 is really a translation of either from Z1, you think about adding Z2 to it, you move over that much, or vice versa, because addition is commutative, right? Uh, we looked at negation, what happens when you slap a minus sign on the front of a complex number, and what we concluded was, you can think of it either as reflection, like you, you reflect across this way, um, or alternatively, what I suggest is a better um, way to think about it, and the reason will become clear in the next 10 minutes or so, is that negation really means you rotate it around the origin by pi radians. Okay? And that's what gets you from, say, the first quadrant around to the third. Okay? Now, addition, negation, which gave us subtraction. What operation is next? <laughs> multiplication. <laughs> multiplication. Okay, now... To demonstrate multiplication for you, I'm going to abandon that Z1 and Z2 I gave you before. Um, we, can, we can work with them, but um, this is starting to get a bit trickier, so I'm going to choose some very, very simple examples for you. Okay? So, for instance, and I'm going to just pop this up here in the right-hand corner, we're going to fill this in, like what is multiplication. We'll do that after we've gone through this process. Let's just say Z1 is just the number 1. Now, every real number that you know about actually is like 1 actually is a complex number. It's just that it's got no imaginary component. Okay? So 1 is still a complex number. It's just I don't worry about the i's. Where is Z1 on my diagram? It's going to be on the real axis, right? Because there's no imaginary part. Okay? Um, so I'm going to put him, I guess I'll place him like there. Okay? That's, that's um, Z1. Okay? Now here's what I want to do. Like I said, I'm choosing very simple examples so I can see what's happening. I want to multiply by a number. Now, what's a nice, simple, complex number to choose? For Z2, I'm just going to go with i. i is the quintessential complex number, right? So, multiplying 1 by i just gives me i. Now, where is i on my complex plane? Okay? Being that i, Z2, is purely imaginary, right? It belongs in line with zero on the real axis, but it belongs up here. And there's Z2. Okay. Multiplying by i is taking me from there to there. Okay. Now, at the moment, I don't know enough. You know how we're doing a series of sequences, and you need three things for a pattern, right? I've got two things right now, one, two, but I don't know what's geometrically getting me from here to here. It could be translation. It could be reflection across the line, you know, y equals x if I wanted to. I don't know enough yet. So let's do it again. Okay, Z3. When I multiply by i again, I've got i squared now, but I know what i squared is by definition. It's negative 1. Where is negative 1 on my complex plane? Negative 1 is completely real. It's purely real. Okay, so I'm back on the real axis over here. Okay, we're going to do it one more time to make it bleedingly obvious. If I multiply by i one last time, z4 will be negative 1 times i, which is negative i. Negative i. And I won't ask it again. This time, let's just plot this guy. He belongs down here on the negative imaginary axis. Okay. Four times I have done the same operation. Okay. The first time I went from here to here. The second time went from here to here. It's third time, wait, first, second, three, three times, of course, from one to four. Um, three times I've done this operation. What is the geometric thing that gets me repeatedly from here to here to here to here? And you can see, even in the way that I've drawn, like moving my hand, right? I am clearly rotating around the origin. Do you see that? Okay, so what I've done is I've rotated this far. I've rotated, in this case, by pi on 2 radians. Right? That's 90 degrees. 
When I multiply by i the second time, I rotate again. Another pi on two radians. And then the last time, there's my final rotation. Okay. Now you can see here, if I rotated one last time, Z5, where would Z5 be? He'd be back here, and the reason why is because multiplying by i four times is the same as multiplying by negative one two times, which is the same as multiplying by one. And it lands you back where you started, okay? What's something you can do four times and you end up back where you began? And the answer is you rotate pi on two radians and you'll get back there, okay? So I'll just dot, dot, dot. Okay, so therefore my conclusion is multiplication in the complex world Multiplication is rotation. And now can you see why I was insisting that negation really is actually a kind of rotation? What is negation? Negation is the multiplication by a, a number, right? What, what is my multiplying by? Negative one. Negative one. Okay, now multiplying by i rotates me pi on two radians, right? Multiplying by negative 1, which was what I said negation is, right? That's just multiplying by i twice. Which is why you go pi on 2 and pi on 2 again gets you to pi. You see what's going on? So in fact, that's why negation is not really reflection, even though that, that's what it ends up looking like. Okay? Negation is just a particular example of multiplication. It's multiplication by negative 1, which is going to spin you around all the way to the opposite side. Okay?